Swing and a miss, LeMahieu down on strikes. In this episode, DJ LeMahieu is going through his worst struggles as a Yankee. We'll dive in and ponder whether or not he's playing hurt. Also, Luis Severino continues to struggle, but on the bright side, we do have some bats beginning to heat up. Let's get started. Struck him out swinging high fastball. There it goes! If you follow this podcast, by now you've heard of Game Time. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the world for a reason. What Game Time is, is an app that allows you to buy last minute tickets to local events at the lowest rate possible. So let's say the Yankees have an off night and you decide, hey, I want to go catch a comedy show. I want to go see a band play. I want to go see a hockey game. You just hop on the Game Time app and you can get a really good deal very quickly and save a lot of money. Use the code NYYRECAPS to save even more money because you'll get $20 off your first purchase. I recently used it. I try not to have ads for anything that I don't endorse personally, and I gotta say, it's a great experience. It's very simple to use. Use the code NYYRECAPS on the GameTime app and get the lowest price on last-minute tickets guaranteed. Welcome back, everybody. I am joined tonight, as I am every Friday, by Pete Simonetti of NYY News TV. Pete, I got just one question for you. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I am doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Um, I'm, I'm glad doing good. You... Okay, all right. I ain't doing, we, don't. we talked a little bit about this before we got on, but I'm glad the mustache has survived. Hanging in there. It has survived. You know, somebody said uh, as the continuation of the growth, I'm starting more and more to resemble Carlos Rodon. And I'm like, all right, hey, you know what? I'll take it. I think you got to get the handlebar going. I think you got to get the Mattingly thing Everybody going. keeps telling me that. I got I, I might just – maybe I'll, I'll, I'll have that for him and, and we'll, we'll do that. That would be, that'd be gorgeous. Uh, so let's start with uh, DJ. We've got a few topics, but the main one mm -hmm. I want to talk about is DJ. Uh, my audience – has been pretty upset with DJ the last few nights. It yep. seems to dominate the chat, dominate the conversation. Hitting 234, no power right now. Uh, earlier this season, you and I were talking about how exciting it was to watch him kind of bounce back, but we were also saying, you know, yeah. temper expectations because you played this guy every day. Something's going to something's gonna wear out, and I think something may have worn out. So my question for you, is he hurt, is he slumping, or is he washed up, or is it some combination of the three? Um, man, I tell you, but, but I'm, I'm right there with you. I hear the same things about LeMay you right now is, you know, is he washed? That's the new, that's the, the saying washed. now is, is he washed? He, he's done. You know, we, we brought up injury a lot. He's injured, you know, last year he was injured. That's why we're seeing this. You know, I told people recently, I said, you know what, guys, I, I just can't use the injury anymore as, as a real problem here. He chose not to get the surgery. I guess you could think of maybe that's still bothering him. Maybe it's come back. But I, I just I, I can't see it anymore as being an injury thing. Um, strikeout numbers are up a ton. And even with a foot injury, you would still think, yeah, it could affect it a little bit. But doubling where he yeah. normally is? I mean, this to me is what I said yesterday on game season is he just seems like a guy who no longer could react as quick as he used to. He used yeah. to be able to be late on a ball, but he drives at the right field. This year, you're not seeing that as much anymore. He's just missing, completely missing. And he, I hate saying it, when a guy struggles for a long period of time and they're up there at you know 34, which is, which is old for baseball terms, you kind of start saying maybe he's just aging and he's just getting old. I think we got spoiled during the steroid era of seeing guys play till 38, 39. Yeah. You know, there was a time, Mattingly was out of the game at 34. Same type of hitter as yep. DJ, essentially. And, you know, you look at, uh, and I can pull up this, the the metrics here. Um, you know, average exit velocity is not bad, but everything else, uh, essentially, in the in the blue is not yep. good. Um, outs above average, he's doing good on defense, but, look, he can't run anymore. He's not walking no. as much. And like you said, he's just striking out way too much. The strikeouts are really concerning because that's, Very that's much. like uncharacteristic of him. We just don't expect him to to come up empty. I'm wondering if it's if it's a combination of 
you know, he's probably feeling a little something, but it's not bad enough to keep him out of the lineup. Plus, it's just the age and the reaction time. You know, he just, I wouldn't say washed, but as you get older, those slumps probably go a little bit longer. Yeah. They're a little bit worse. I don't know. Is is this beginning of the end, you think? You know, for, for me, again, I just, like you said, it, the reaction time just has not been there. And, and, you know, earlier in the year, we were talking, well, you know what? LeMayu looks like LeMayu. He's getting up to the 290s again. And then it was like, goodbye. See you later. That guy is disappeared, and and now I'm just in a prolonged slump, and I can't get out of it. The scary thing right now is that LeMay was not even hitting the ball hard though. It recently, I mean, it's been it's been soft grounders, soft grounders to short, soft grounders to the second baseman, back to the pitcher. It just looks like again that uh, he looks great in the field. Don't get me wrong, but it just looks like that reaction time in the bat has slowly faded away a little bit and that's going to get you before anything because he can still pop one every now and then you yeah. can still hit the ball hard every now and then but when that reaction time goes a little bit you're just not going to be the same guy as he was before and to come into the year i was saying i just need him to bat above 280 it's going to yeah. be tough for him to bat above 280 unless he gets really hot the rest of the way i don't i don't think that's happening he's probably gonna strike out so 100, 150 times you know if yeah. he keeps playing uh meanwhile you know oswald uh, Peraza struggling a little bit over the last week or so in triple a. What do you think about when he starts to heat back up, which is inevitable? You know, we've yeah. seen how blistering hot he can get. Let's yep. say he has a couple of good days in a row. What do you think about putting DJ on the IL for two weeks? You know, take 10 days off, rest up, get that foot feeling good, get everything that's kind of cranky feeling good and just let, you know, Oswald come up and, and play straight for 10 days. Yeah, it just also depends on, you know, how the Yankees visualize that lineup, you know, or visualize that infield, even with LeMayu out of it is, you know, does he just cover for Donaldson, uh, uh, Torres, Volpe every now and then and get him in a lineup, but he probably does need more rest than, than we've even, you know, thought about. We were saying, I remember early on, you know, not that he's an everyday guy, but you got to start letting him have a seat every now and then. It might be even more than that. You might be looking at a guy who's better off that he's, more of that bench type role. And I hate saying that about him, but not a guy that is playing four days consecutively. Yeah. Um, that he's able to move around a little bit and, and you are able to rest him more than you visualized. Another guy that we got to talk about, uh, and we were excited about this guy early on, is Luis Severino. You know, yeah. we got our hopes up because when he came back, he looked great for two starts. We saw the 100 mile an hour fastball, we saw the nasty uh, slider, the changeup was wicked. But over yep. his last two starts, as my dad would say, he's hitting a lot of bats. He's hitting yeah. a lot of True. bats. A lot of bats. And and in the barrel. And the barrel of the bat, which yeah. is even worse. But um, yeah, the second start of the year, Seve looked the best he's ever looked. Best ever. He had a phenomenal changeup, 100 mile an hour fastball, great slider. And I'm sitting there going, damn, the Yankees are going to get Carlos back and they're going to be into something here. You know, mm -hmm. they got three elite guys at the top. And Luis Severino, I think he's topping out at like 96, 97 tops a couple of times, 97 the other day, but mainly 95, 96, which by all means is still enough to get guys out. But his location has been dead over the plate. Breaking ball has been non-existent. And guys, he's just a launching pad right now. And Yankees better hope that he turns it around for multiple reasons. One, you need him in that rotation to succeed. Two, even in the worst case scenario, Maybe he comes out of the pen, but could he be come out of the pen in this situation? Take a look at his metrics there. You know, the uh, again, a lot of blue, way too much blue. The fastball velocity, you expect him to be better than in the 68th percentile. Yep. This guy who typically much higher than that. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's just a it's a mystery. It might be that dead arm thing that um, David Cohn was talking about because he didn't yep. have much of a spring. Yep. But, uh, you know, something's up, you know, even when he's you know, got a little bit of a dead arm. He still just doesn't seem to lose that velocity. You know, we've yeah. seen him in spring throwing a hundred miles an hour, but mm -hmm. the it's just, it's just about a foot and a half short right now. Yeah. Guys are right. instead of fouling pitches off or, or, or swinging through that pitch that has that little late hop at the end, they're just hammering him. Destroying I don't him. know, man. Do you think maybe he's feeling a little bit of the uh, contract pressure too? Maybe Could pitching be. through something. Could be. I mean, look, uh, I'll be honest with you. If I was 70, 70 in this situation, if there was a little minor thing nagging me, I'm trying to pitch through it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, th th he's, he's getting a little up there. He knows he wants to get a pretty decent contract. 
at this point, I mean, he's going to be one of those guys that are going to say, hey, give me a one-year deal and let me rebound. He's going to have to be one of those guys at this yeah. point. I don't think anybody's going to look at him and go, hey, man, yeah, we'll give you five years guaranteed. No way. Yeah. I mean, why would you? I so, think this it, next start is critical, man. This next one. No doubt. Man, because, like, you put you start putting three bad ones in a row, then you can't really blame it on a dead arm, you know? Because yep. you, you could say maybe a dead arm for one, maybe two. Like, if there's some residual stuff, didn't pitch for a while, maybe two starts. You, you don't have a dead arm for three straight starts. That's no. that's two weeks. That doesn't happen. So it's going to be either a, a lingering injury or a mechanical issue, issue. But we've never seen him with a 5.75 ERA like this and less strikeouts than innings pitch, which is something that's yep. unusual for him. Yeah, and then also, too, you also never – he gave up home runs, but, I mean, he looks like – I mean, anybody's going to hit him at this point. Guys aren't just swinging through that fastball right now. You know, yeah. they're, they're laying off the breaking pitches – the 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 change up that he's developed that really become a plus plus pitch hasn't been there the last couple of outings. So is it all possible that Sevy comes out his next outing like, oh damn, okay, he's good. You know, it's possible. Yeah. But if it does go the other way, I'm right there with you, man. You really got to start sitting back and going, what is this Yankee rotation? You know, what what is it going to look like? Who who's there? This feels like one of those years where. Um... I guess it's called Murphy's law. Everything that can go wrong will, will. go wrong. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the pitching has been hurt. You know, judge has been down twice. Bader can't yep. stay in the lineup. Hopefully he's going to be back soon, but you know, the situation with Bader kind of reminds me of, um, of Severino a little bit. Bader wants to play. Yankees won't let him play. Right. Yep. Right now the Yankees are in, in third place. They're eight and a half back. Sometimes you just got to push the chips into the table, take a little bit of a risk, you know, yeah. let him play. He's they're, they're better with him out there. And I feel like with Severino, if he was feeling a little something, like you said, he's probably pitching through it and he's probably not telling them because if he tells no, them, not. Hey, I'm feeling, I'm feeling something. They're going to shut him down. And oh, he, yeah. he, he, he hates being shut down. He wants yep. to get out there and, and, and pitch and make his money. And I feel like the Yankees just, they, they handle him with these baby gloves and he hates that. I think that's a great point. What you just said is that right at some point you got to say, "Hey, look, if we had this plan of letting guys wait, we cannot wait." At some point, you got to be the New York Yankees and go, "Guys, it's mid June. Yeah, almost mid June. It's getting closer to that. We are eight and a half games out. We are also not guaranteed a wild card spot with Houston and Texas playing the way they are, and yeah. Boston playing the way they are. And not Boston, excuse me, um, Baltimore." We got to figure out something here where these guys are on the field. For an example, I know we might get into, we'll probably get into tonight's lineup, but even the idea of all these rest days would judge out. Glaber Torres needs to be in that lineup. I mean, I yeah. know you give guys days off. I'm 100% okay with that. But when, when you have a situation like this, you're facing Boston, you got to win, you got Garrett Cole on the mound. Everybody should be in that lineup with Garrett Cole on the mound to try to get a victory. Everybody should be out there. Let's take a look at the lineup. So DJ, we mentioned struggling hitting leadoff. Uh, Donaldson in the number two spot, <laughs> geez, hitting 161. So the the two guys at the top of our lineup are hitting 234 and 161. How come we can't score runs, guys? How come we can't score runs? Rizzo struggling. He's in the number three spot. I, I'm not sure he's he's healthy from that neck thing. I don't I, think so either. Since it was like a light switch flipped. Uh, you know, when that happened and he hasn't been the same Stanton is my pick tonight because he kills the Red Sox. He just yep, kills. He them. does. Um, I always try and choose when I make my thumbnail for the post game. I always try and choose somebody ahead of time that uh, I think is going to play well. And, you know, and there was no, no decision tonight. It had to be Stanton yep. Bowers. So we're going to get to him in just a second, mm -hmm. uh, playing right <clears throat> field, but swinging the bat a little good, a little bit better Had a couple of doubles, uh, against the White Sox kind of Falefa in center field. What are your thoughts on IKF in the outfield lately? I think he's been looking a lot better. He looks better in the outfield, definitely. Um, no doubt about it. Especially cent center field, he seems to get better reads on the ball than left or right. He seems like yeah. he kind of kind of takes charge in center field, and he's been good. I mean, he has no arm whatsoever, but for a guy that's going to be able to make some plays out there, he's done a good job with it. Yeah. Uh, McKinney in left field. That McKinney home run was fun last night. Good to see him yep. finally getting a chance after you know coming up all these years and, and, and bouncing around. Trevino behind the dish. Look, I, I think Trevino's a guy we got to get a little bit more offensive uh, production out of right now just because, I mean, we don't have a lot of 
a lot of other options. And the other guy that really, yeah. I mean, I hate to say this because you don't want to lean on a rookie. We got to get Volpe to step it up like forthwith. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, just speaking real quick on Trevino, man, I have a, um, I have a pretty decent, you know, reason here of what the Yankees could do to kind of bump up that catcher position to get a little, to get a little better. Let's hear it. The Yankees got to sit with their pitching staff and just simply say to them, Hey, look, I know some of you guys like Higgy. I get it, but this kid, Ben Roar vet needs to be up. He got to get used to you guys. Yeah. And you got to let this kid play, man. Ben Rortvet has hit it very, very well in AAA. A lefty bat, a catcher that got pop. I'm not saying he's going to come up here and hit 330. I'm not saying he's going to come up here and hit 270. But from the little bit that we saw and the things that we saw Ben Rortvet, now, I'm going to ask Eric Kratz about this on Tuesday because I have heard many times that it's very, very hard for a pitching staff to adjust to a catcher mid-year. And a lot of times teams don't want to do that. But you got Trevino. Yeah. And that's the point of saying, hey, look, you got to get him familiar. It's still early. Whether you want to say that or not, it is still early in the year. But you got to make that change now. And I know people are going to go, yeah, but they're concerned. Of what if what if Higgy went down? Or what if Rortvet went down? Or Trevino went down? What do the Yankees do? The Yankees have been dealing with the most injuries in baseball for three years. Yeah. They can handle a catcher. There's somebody available out there that can come in there and catch. Trust me, that shouldn't be the concern. But they have to find cheap offense, not necessarily Bellingers. And these they got to figure out cheap offense. And they have it in the minor leagues, but they have to make the call and go, we got to change now. We can't wait. Real quick, I'm going to share Ben Rortvet's numbers in AAA. I hadn't looked at him in a bit, but holy cow. Hitting 345, 463 on 463 on base percentage, Pete. He's finally drawing walks this year, and that's one thing that was actually against him when he was in Minnesota Yeah, uh, coming over because I talked to a scout about him when the Yankees got him. And the one thing they said is he could hit for power. His average will improve if he could finally walk. And now he's walking. He's actually taking pitches now. He needs to be up here. I don't know how he isn't. It makes no sense. And he's a good catcher, 1.081 OPS. Very good defensively. Now, yep. we know that AAA stats don't always translate. Like, you know, Hoy Drew Park and Estevan Floreal, they they light up the minor leagues but have struggled against major league pitchers. But like you said, Rortvet looked pretty good. Like, he had competitive yeah. at-bats. He hit the ball hard. Um, we should probably get to Floreal in a, in a second. Um, yep. You know what? Let's get to him because, you know, we got to talk about Bowers and Calhoun. I, I've never been on the, on the Floreal train. I know yep. um, there's that, that – that point that he's only had 54 at bats in the major league spread out across yeah. a few years. But to me, it was very telling that every team could have had a chance on him and, and, and right. nobody took him to me. That's True. the one big red flag. And that's why yeah. I'm like, kind of, I'm kind of agreeing with the Yankees on this one. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know. Here's, here's the point that I always make on Floreal. And I, I think it's, I think it's rather simple. If you look at the Yankees team right now, they have no outfielders. And you can sit there and say, okay, well, IKF is a center field. Bauer, Bowers is a horrible outfielder. Calhoun's a horrible outfielder. And if you want to say, you know, IKF, okay. IKF has been, you know, good catching a ball. The one thing you can guarantee about Floriel, he's a very, very good defender. Yeah. And he's probably going to run into one every now and then. Is Floriel going to come up and hit, you know, 330 for an extended period of time? No, because he strikes out way too much. Walks yeah. are up, but that's also walks up in AAA. My whole excuse for him has basically been this. Now that even Greg Allen is out for six to eight weeks, you don't have that fourth outfielder type. If the Yankees' concern is, well, if we call him up, you know, we're going to lose him again. Like you said before, nobody picked him up the last time. Right. But this time they might because he's actually showing numbers in AAA. But if you're the Yankees, you go, hey, look, man. You're going to get a chance for three weeks. Well, I mean, what are we putting over you that's really that much better? If it doesn't work, bye. We're done here. See you later. And you know, maybe you'll be surprised. You never know. You know, I think but he can play defense. Me. He well, can play we just, defense. We just heard that Allen is out for six to eight weeks. The way I the way I look at it now, why not put him on the sixty day IL? The Yankees always, for that's some it. reason, put guys on the ten day IL yep, when they're going to exactly. be out for months and months and months. Take advantage of the rules. They're there for yep. a reason. They're there for exactly. a situation like this. If if I'm the Yankees, like I feel like you've won me over with your defense uh, discussion. I I agree with you that like you can't lose a game because Bowers can't run down a ball in the gap. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, and we've seen it. And we've seen it. 
Look, we've yeah. seen it. Look, I love Cabrera too. Cabrera's also not a really great. We're not seeing the same guy we saw in right field last year in the outfield. I mean, yeah, the other day, he couldn't even pick the ball up. I mean, he's chasing. It was like a Benny Hill sketch. He's chasing <laughs> it around. The outfield can't pick the ball up. And this guy right here, I mean, hey, look, Boone was right about one thing. He could bang. He hits well, but he also cannot field. Can't run. He's not an outfielder. Either. Can't he's run. Slow. He's, uh, you know, and, and and I think a lot of his production, he's like the typical lefty that hits well in Yankee Stadium. Like, I feel like he's yeah. going to hit well at Yankee Stadium because he can reach the porch. I don't think he's going to do great on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the guy I'm really excited about is Bowers. Uh, because I like to Bowers. Me, uh, you know, he had that little bit of a slump there, and we we kind of shat on him. But to his credit, he's turned it around, and we're seeing yesterday the double down the right field line. He's hitting mm -hmm. the ball really hard. That's what yeah. I love. He's hitting the ball hard, and he's hitting it in the air, so you get extra yeah. base hits. He's got you... that classic Greg Bird type of swing. I love yeah. it. And the, the cool thing about Bowers is, so you probably heard the story about him. He changed his, he made some mechanical changes and he all of a sudden in spring, they're like, damn, this is really paying off for this guy. We, we believe in him. Well, he leveled his swing. Yeah. So he went away from the big uppercut and he's leveled it more. And now he's seeing the success and the ball is being put into play more. Let, let, put it like this with Bowers. If anybody is trying to put his season into, pers into perspective, if Bowers walked a little bit, he'd be one of the best hitters in the Yankees lineup right now. And it wouldn't yeah. even be close. His average would be closing on 300 if he walked a little bit. His OPS is now, I still think, over 900. He's having a, this is a really legitimate find for the Yankees. So I always give them credit on those things. And he's also a guy that got power to all fields. Yeah, we just saw it. That opposite field home run. That's not easy to do at Yankee Stadium for a left. Not at all. Not at all. And, and this is a guy who, I even I was even talking about it today with a few people. I said, look, here's a guy that even when Bader comes back and even when Judge gets back, you can seriously make an argument that he should still be in the outfield or getting playing time. They got to run him out there as much as they can. I mean, look at these numbers. I mean, that's phenomenal. 891 OPS. That's no joke. Not that at all. No joke. Not at um, all. I, so I'm going to hit you up with the, uh, the question <clears throat> of the hour. Uh, when do you think Aaron Judge is going to be back? Um, I actually am believing more because apparently if you have a grade two, you can't walk. Mm -hmm. And he is not in need of a boot. Or they, they asked him, and he's like, no, I could, and he could walk. So per that, they're saying three weeks is usually what that would take. If, so, if it is on the light side of three weeks, even a month, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm thinking July 1st. Like if he's back by July 1st. That. If he's back by July 1st, I'm like, all right, we got him for the second half. Stay, you know, let's take it easy around the walls. You know, I mean, yeah. he's too I important. Mean, you got you to gotta have that talk with him, man. Like somebody brought to me today, they, Pete, well, you have to DH him. But you can't, though. That's, that's, the, that's the problem with this Yankee lineup. Can you give him time at DH? Of course. And maybe you give him a little more time at DH. But Aaron Judge is also extremely beneficial to you in right field. Yeah. And, and that, that's the other thing. Oh, God, you got to put this guy on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> five hits, but four of them have left the ballpark. What are you seeing yeah. from him? I'm seeing pretty much the same guy as last year. He's just run into a few. Yeah, more. he's run into a few more, uh, and, and it's one of those it's one of those tricky things, right? Where it's like, hey, look, I still got power, but look, everybody knows this. Power goes last. It's one of the last things you'll lose is your is your power. Yeah. Your bat, your your speed will slow down. Your bat will slow down, but the power could stay there. He's still not catching up to a lot. I think he's guessing well. And I know that might sound like, ah, come on, give the guy credit. I want, I'll give him credit on one thing. He's still phenomenal at third base. Yeah. And I give him credit on it. Defensively, he's awesome defensively, no doubt about it. Do I see this guy ever hitting above 220, 230, 240? No. He's yeah. not going to be consistent enough, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with you. I do think we're going to get more production out of him than we had last year, just power, power wise, because. It does seem like he's raised his stance a little bit. He's got a little yep. bit better launch angles. So some of those balls that he was hitting to the warning track might just have that extra little bit of lift to get out. But again, yep. he's he's not a guy who's going to hit many line drives all over the ballpark or anything like that. I got a I got a question for you actually, real sure. quick. Um, <clears throat> any thoughts shifting on Volpe, or do you feel at some point are are you adding a little more pressure to him? Still, are you kind of just like it is what it is. Well, what are you going to do? I I wouldn't say my shot my thoughts are shifting on Volpe. I, I still, um, 
you know, I still recognize that he only had 22 games at AAA, and, and, and the development's going to take a little bit longer than it traditionally would. But the Yankees are in a position where they need offense. I mean, you need offense, and he's yeah. just not getting it. You know, I, I, I'm, I've been fighting it, but I think we're, we're getting to that point in the next couple of weeks. He doesn't start hitting. you got to start talking about uh, sending him down. The last 20 games, he's hitting 120. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. Yeah, it's, and that's what I was explaining recently too. Cause a lot of people, you know, and I, I don't want, it's, it's not an excuse because I've, I've used the same exact thing is that he, he did skip AAA. That is just the fact of the matter. The Yankees decided, and like Boone said, we want your development to continue here. So yep. basically saying, Hey, kid, if you fail worse than the other eight guys in the lineup, it's okay. We understand that. We get that. The concern is like you said, but now it's getting to, a blinking alarm level of struggle. 123 over, what is it, 20 games? Is that is that what the stat was? I think it was 121 over his last 20 games. 121 over his last 20 games. Guys, that is, that's that's not, no way you could see that as saying that's okay. It's not good at that's all. Not big, that's not big league level. Not at all. And as much as, you know, we all want Volpe to succeed, because if the Yankees are going to succeed in the future, I think he's a part of that. And they're going to need him. But they need some sort of level of production out of him. And another question you asked early, what if Peraza gets hot? If July comes and you still see Peraza hitting 308, 315, 320, you really might have to start saying, I mean, do you make that switch? Mm. Do you and that's, that's a very tough one for the Yankees to make. Very because tough now they're, they're, they're kind of saying, hey, we were wrong. Yeah. Mr. Pete Simonetti, NYY News TV. I put that heat on him, and he didn't want to pretend it. Appreciate it, man. You're going to be on Bad Dog's channel tonight? Yes, I'll be on Bad Dog's channel calling the game, so it gives me a, a little bit of a break. A little half, half a break, yeah. Half a break. I, I'm loving that we have Mondays off. You know, I used to hate yes. days off, but now that we do the everyday everyday show, it's like every when yep. the Yankees are off, I'm just like, oh, I get to Damn right. you know, take, take a day to stretch and, and do all that. All right, Matter of fact, if you don't that. mind – Sure. Can I just say really quickly, guys, we have 38 tickets left for NYY News TV Day on September 23rd. Derek is going to be there. Of course, I'll be there, the entire team. But it is going to be an amazing event. Uh, check it out on Twitter, NYY New at NYY News TV. You can find a link pinned. And, of course, if you're on my channel, you'll, you'll see it somewhere. But uh, 38 tickets left, and we cannot guarantee more than the 100 we've been given. But it's selling out a lot faster than the last event. So if you want to go, Trust me, get your tickets. You're going to absolutely love it. Five-star dining is the best seat in the house. You will love it. I will pitch it to my uh, post-game show, too, because I'll be there. My brother's going to be there. A uh, couple of good friends are coming. Frankie Baseball will be there. He's so. still looking for the Loch Ness, isn't he? No, he's still out there hunting for Nessie. Oh, yeah. Nessie. <laughs> All right, Funny guys. Way. We'll see you later. Ball game over. Most impressive.